بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله In the previous session Allah عز وجل We mentioned that Allah عز وجل listed a number of favors and bounties upon mankind that he subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitated for them and for their animals as enjoyment and as bounties from Allah Azza wa and as evidence proving his ability subhanahu wa ta'ala to resurrect as he is able to create. In the following uh, set of verses which are the last verses in this surah uh, Allah Azza wa brings things to the end and after talking about life and its enjoyment and things that they enjoyed in it Allah Azza wa shifts the speech to be talking about the hereafter resurrection and the hereafter Allah Azza wa says فَإِذَا جَاءَتِ الصَّاخَّةِ الصاخة is one of the names of the Day of Judgment. Allah Azza wa Jal says the meaning of this is that but when there comes the deafening blast. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal is referring to the uh, blast of the horn. That piercing blast which signals the uh, day of resurrection. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal begins here describing the initial stage of resurrection with that violent, extremely violent blast that almost deafens the ears and splits the heart because it's an introduction to terrifying events that will take place. It is so terrifying that Allah describes the state of people after that. Allah says, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ The closest kin anyone can have. On the day a man will flee from his brother, his mother and his father, his wife and his children. The brother, the mother, the father, the wife and the children, no one left out. From the closest relatives to the person, none is left out in these three verses. The most beloved people, the dearest to anyone's heart, those who are the keenest on your benefit, your salvation, and that nothing harms you, such people will turn their backs to you and me. You, you, have, to, you have to understand why though. It's not just any moment, it's not just any event, it's not just any other day. It's a terrifying day. People will realize that it is real. What we were promised is actually taking place. Ibn Kathir quotes a, a statement from Ikrimah saying that on that day, the man would run and approach his wife. Your wife, the mother of your children. The, per the person who is obliged to obey you more than her father and mother, once she becomes your wife. On that day, me and you will approach our wives. He said the man would approach his wife and say, what type of a husband was I to you? What kind of a person was I with you or to you 
She would start praising and praising you were this and you were that. You were the best man. Encouraging, isn't it? Isn't it? Then he would say, I just want one reward from you. That would rescue me from what you see. She, said, she would say, Ikrimah says, she would say, you have not asked for anything great. It's very minor what you're asking me for. However, I fear what you fear. I can't give it up for you or for your sake. The man would give up on her now and would turn to his children. He would turn to his children he would run after his son and say, Son, what type of a father was I to you? He would praise and praise and praise. Then Ikrimah says, he would say, I am looking for something as little as an atom's weight of reward that you give up for my sake. The son would say, this is nothing to give up. However, I fear what you fear. I can't give it up for your sake. يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ Your mother, your father. When the Prophet ﷺ wanted to give us or to bring closer to our minds how great the mercy of Allah is, He gave an example of the mother's mercy. That mother would turn away from you. That father would turn away from you. That day is difficult, is terrifying, it is scary, it is serious. And it will take place. And preparation starts here. And then Allah Azza wa Jal explains. Why are these people turning away and running away from you and me? لِكُلِّ مْرِئِمْ مِنْهُمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ شَأْنٌ يُغْنِي For every man that day will be occupied with a matter adequate for him. Yes, each will be occupied with his own rescue. See, these terrifying events would make a person lose his focus and concentration, would forget who is around him. He would not care about anything but his own rescue. No one would trust what he has sent forth, like the verses we heard in Salatul Isha now. O you who have believed, Fear Allah and let each soul look what it had sent forth for tomorrow. People would not care about anything. In the book of, uh, books of Imam al-Bukhari and Muslim, as narrated by Aisha, the Prophet ﷺ said, You will be resurrected on the day of judgment, barefooted, naked, and uncircumcised. Imagine that huge gathering of all mankind from Adam until the end of time, until Allah Azza wa Jal. Put to death the last soul. All of them be, will be naked. Naked. Aisha was stunned. She was so shy. She said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, men and women looking at one another? He said, Ya Aisha, the matter is graver. The matter is more serious than for people to be concerned about such an issue. It wouldn't even cross their mind to look. 
See, people will be escaping from the dearest to their hearts. Why? Because of what's coming up. They've seen the introduction. They've seen everything. It's become a reality. They're living. So everybody loses his focus and concentration on anything except one matter. Their own rescue. Their salvation. Because the consequence, the destiny is one of two things. There is no third. You're either going to go to Jannah or going to go to hell. That's why it is so serious. And then Allah Azza wa Jal starts describing the two parties. The two groups. People will be two types. وَجُوهُ يَوْمَئِذٍ مُسْفِرَةٍ ضَاحِكَةٌ مُسْتَبْشِرَةٍ This is one type. The blessed type. Some faces that they will be bright, laughing, rejoicing at good news. We ask Allah to make us amongst them. These are the faces of pious people, believers who worked for that day. They will be bright. They will be happy. Why? Because Allah Azza wa Jal showed them the introduction to their salvation, their rescue. So they know now. They know now what they're going to enjoy. The introduction of bliss was already given to them. So they have the hope and the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. Their hearts are uh, calm and tranquil. They feel safe and secure. After seeing all these grave, terrifying matters, and their own destination has been made clear to them, they rejoice. The other, on the other side, or the other hand, وَوُجُوهُ يَوْمَئِذٍ عَلَيْهَا تَرْهَقُهَا قَتَرَةً and other faces that they will have upon them dust, blackness will cover them. Miserable people, aren't they? Those who disobeyed Allah or disbelieved in Allah Azza wa Jal. And disobedient people are included. The bitterness they will feel will reflect on their faces. Their faces will be stained with blackness and darkness. Their hearts will be so gloomy. Why? Because they saw the introduction to the evil consequence, the evil destiny that's awaiting them. Again, the nature of the Meccan chapters is that it addresses this issue a lot. With this, Allah Azza wa Jal concludes the, the surah. A final note, brothers. Talking, explaining, learning, teaching is very good. But if it stops there, it's of no good. If we don't make, if we don't make these verses and the knowledge we acquire a motivating factor in our lives that would bring us closer to Allah and keep us away from the disobedience of Allah Azza wa Jal, then we're wasting our lives. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to protect us from evil ends and to make us among those who will have bright, beaming faces with happiness and joy. Allahumma ameen. وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين ويكنكلود دس سورة سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب